Hey, welcome to the film room. In this video, we're gonna break down the step up ball screen and talk about ways that you can manipulate the defense to get open looks. So for starters, a step up is any ball screen that is set typically in the outer third of the court that sends the ball handler towards the sideline and the baseline. Now, some people refer to this as an alley screen, but it's the same concept. And the thing that's great about this screen is there are very few ways to guard it so you can know and anticipate what you're going to see from a defense every time you set one. And the goal with every ball screen is the same. We either wanna force a switch or we wanna force help, which means two people are guarding one. So as soon as we get into this step up and there are two people that are guarding the basketball, it's going to force the defense to be at a disadvantage because they're now required to help. Most defenders are taught that they need to get to the midline in this situation, which is naturally going to force longer closeouts when the ball gets kicked out. And all it takes is a bad closeout for us to get down into the paint and get an easy look. Now, one of the most important things to understand about step ups is that they can be in one of two categories. The first is what I would refer to as a paired side ball screen. I use that term because there will be a pair of guards or wings on both sides of the court, and it also means that the floor is balanced. But the goal is always the same. We want to get two people to the ball and then just take advantage of the numbers. We now have three offensive players being guarded by two defensive players, and so all that's left is to have good spacing and make the right reads. The other category of step ups is what I would refer to as a cleared side step up. Instead of having a balanced floor, all three of the other players are on the opposite side of the court and there's no one in the strong side corner. So now as we use this step up screen and we hopefully make two people guard one, the big can either roll or he can pop and there are now three defenders on the backside that we have to account for. So if your big can shoot, it's a great idea to have him pop because this defender will have to stunt to take away the catch and shoot three. And when he does, you can swing it one more to his man and you even have one more pass to the corner that you can make, which puts this defender in a really tough situation. But number 10 needs to slide all the way to the dead corner to stretch the defense. Now pay attention to how this stunt makes the big hesitate and they're able to get back in front and take away any advantage that the offense had created. In these situations, you have to make decisions quickly. Now it's more difficult to create advantages in a cleared side step up because the backside has three defenders who can tag or help. But when the court is balanced and you run a paired side step up, what you'll see is that there's only two defenders on the backside who can help now, which makes it easier to take advantage. But to remind you of what the goal always is, as this ball handler snakes back to the right, he makes two people guard one, which is what we want, and then you just have to identify where the mismatch is. All of these perimeter defenders are matched up except for the big, they throw it back and he knocks it down. Now understanding tags is now the most important part after you get past making two people guard one. So when it comes to tags on a cleared side step up, what you're always gonna have is three people. You'll have a low tag, you'll have a high tag, and then you'll have what I would refer to as the plug and this is the guy that changes based on whether it's a cleared or a paired side. So in this possession, you get a roll from the big man and when he catches it, the low tag steps up to take the ball, which is normal, and now he needs to make a decision. The high tag is taking his man, so the read is based off what the plug does because he is now responsible for two. And this is where those fast decisions have to be made. And as you can see, the ball should have been kicked to the wing based on his decision, but the big tried to score one-on-one -on -one and ended up missing. So the reason a paired side ball screen is easier is because there's more space to work with. As the ball handler comes off, now you only have a low tag and a high tag to deal with because the plug is in this strong side corner. So both of these defenders versus a roll have to get all the way to the midline. And in this possession, Iowa ends up sending their high tag down to take the ball. Their low tag stays with his matchup. And as the big is trying to recover to the paint, Big Rob finds the last man who's open. He hits him and they get an easy layup and Iowa State got multiple buckets in the first half from running this step up. And now that you understand tags, I'll show you what they were doing to make it easier. They started adding an exit screen, which is where someone runs off of a screen baseline as the step up was happening, because now Iowa only has a single tag. So as soon as they came off the step up, they threw it back to the shake and threw it right into the big, and that influenced this help defender to come over while the big was returning to his man, and hopefully you know what I'm gonna say next, 
They now have two people on the ball and this cutter is open. Big Rob sees him again. Another assist for the big fella. And oftentimes people don't recognize this stuff happening during the games, but coaches typically do and that's why they run these plays over and over. Later in the half, they ran the same play again. Here's the step up, here's the exit screen, here's your single tag. And to Iowa's credit, they tried to make an adjustment. As he came off, the single tag stayed with his man, the exit screen guy stayed with his, and the big tried to come in and take away the roll man. But again, because there's two people on the ball, that still leaves this slip open and he scores it again. So we're gonna take a look at Iowa running the same step up screens, but not executing it the way that Iowa State did. Here is your paired side step up, and as he comes off, pay attention to the tags for Iowa State. The low tag and the high tag never get to the midline, and this short roll area is wide open. And if they were to throw it right away, this low tag would step up to help, and you'd have a wide open touch pass to this cutter for a layup. But because he hesitated and didn't get it out, they end up settling for a tough mid-range jump shot. And later they ran a step up again and didn't have success because of spacing and timing. As they go into this step up ball screen, this short roll area is wide open. Now one of the issues is the big doesn't roll to it, but the other problem is Iowa's shooter needs to space to the wing because by him standing there, it allows the high tag to come over and steal this pass easily because he wasn't stretched by good spacing. Now one of the things that teams will do to stop getting hurt with this disadvantage is they will just just switch the step up. And in the situation that this happens, your two options to look at are either taking advantage of your speed mismatch on the perimeter or your size mismatch in the post. And for more information on that, watch my video on creating mismatches up there in the top corner. But to wrap this video up, let me show you a few tips and tricks that you can use to implement with these step ups to make you harder to guard. One of the things you can do with a step up is flip into it. So make it look like you're gonna set a normal ball screen and at the last second flip into that step up because two things typically happen. Number one, the guard is easier to screen, but number two, that big is usually late because he's trying to come over to the other side and that gives you opportunities to load the gun for three. And the other thing you can implement which makes you really dangerous is what's called a ghost screen. And this is a variation of a pick and pop. So instead of coming up and setting your feet, you're going to just slip out and get as much distance from the ball handler as possible. If those two people guard one, you're gonna have so much distance between you and your man as he recovers that you're gonna have space to shoot it. And this can also create issues for teams that want to switch. I don't think Gonzaga intended to switch this, but because of the good go screen, they did it in an emergency and it creates these bad closeouts and it's easy to drive, get downhill and create advantages. So you don't even have to ghost with someone who can shoot, but mixing it in makes your actions harder to guard. Here, Gonzaga ghosts the first screen and then they go into a step up and the short roll ends up being wide open because that ghost screen pulled the high tag out and it made it an easy read. As always, thanks for coming through. We'll see you next time in the film room.